Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart with the Ted Show. There's the there's the live voice. Um, I'm super excited and really honored to have Sal Kokar, Kokar, and Odessa Jenkins. Sal is with Safer, which is a ride share women's ride share centric um, company, and Odessa is uh, with the Women's no. National Football Conference. Took me a minute. I still need coffee. <laughs> Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Ted. I'm Thanks. excited. I'm so excited to learn um, more about this partnership, this uh, this relationship. But I want to start first with a little bit about you and a little bit about the actual organization or company that you're with. So, o Odessa, let's start with you. Tell us about tell us about WNFC. Yes, the WNFC. WNFC is the premier. Uh, women's tackle football league in the country. Uh, we are in 18 states. We have 20 teams. Uh, we started up last year in 2019. Uh, we have the best and brightest uh, women's tackle football athletes in the country. We're 11 on 11, um, regular rules, full tackle football, and it's it's the most exciting thing in women's sports, if you ask me. Uh, we got some great, great sponsors, sponsored by Adidas and Riddell Sports, and we really are uh, are changing the way the world sees women in sports, and I'm so excited about it. Is it the first women's tackle league? It I is. I don't know. Uh, funny enough, women's tackle football is about 70 years old. Um, wow. Women have been playing almost uh, have been playing organized football almost as long as men have. So there's been several leagues all over the world all over. There's thousands and thousands of women playing this sport. Um, but the WNFC has set uh, and come together to bring together all of those skills and all of those ideas and all of that tradition and take this sport to professionalism. I love that. And how did you get involved? Have you, have you always, have you played? Have you always played? Have you always been an athlete? How did you get involved? Uh, and how did you come up with WNFC? Uh, I'm going to say it right. Women's National football conference. It's so easy. It's just like trying to see the National Football League all the time. Just call it WNFC. That's what we are. Um, so, yeah, um, football was my first sport. I grew up playing all the sports, basketball, football, soccer, anything you put a ball in front of me. And I, I'm an athlete. I was, grew up an athlete in, in South Central LA. And so I love football. Um, but once I got to junior high school, there was nowhere there was nowhere for girls to play. And my basketball coach said, hey, you want to play basketball? You want to play sports in college? You got to stop playing football and playing basketball. And so when I left college, I went to uh, play football and I moved here to Texas. And I don't know if you know anything about Texas and football, but uh, there's it's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a place for everyone to play uh, in Texas. And so I ended up uh, having a pretty decent playing career and um, won a couple uh, gold medals with USA football and US national team awesome. national championship. But I turned around and realized I started coaching and getting into the business of women's football and realized that I was at the top of the sport, but there wasn't much happening for women in the sport. We weren't being taken seriously. We weren't being compensated. There weren't national sponsors, all of this stuff. And we've been doing it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, all of these things. And yet the game was not progressing. And so um, I got together with a bunch of other women and men who had been engaged in tackle football and said, let's take women's tackle football to the next level. And that's what we're doing. I love it. All right. Yeah. So before we figure out uh, this awesome relationship you two have and your organizations have, Sal, tell us a little bit about you. Um, Ted, first of all, thanks for having uh, having me on here. Um, um, you know, my career's primarily been in, in the fashion industry for the last 15 years or so, but, um, a dear friend of mine who got involved, uh, with a, a startup and brought me on and started talking to me about the DNA of safer, uh, it resonated, um, as a, as, as, a, someone that's working, uh, with women for the last 20 years for products that they are living and breathing and fashion, uh, I immediately started to think through of, of, you know, it's just, it's, it's something that we shouldn't even have to worry about, but it's something that women do have to worry about. 
It's something that is one extra step that they have to be concerned with that men don't related to safety and security during transportation, during ride sharing. Um, it really, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it was a subject that was near and dear in my heart. And I basically switched uh, a 20 year career over because I believed in our message and being uh, on the right side of history at the right time and place uh, for us to launch something like this. And um, it's been now, um, you know, s several million invested in creating what we feel is the next uh, rideshare app, uh, which is user friendly. And the messaging is simple. It's rideshare with a focus on empowering women as entrepreneurs, as well as empowering women to make their own decisions and taking their safety in, in, into, into account as first and foremost. And the key to that is simple. Just riders get to choose the gender of the drivers and the drivers get to choose the gender of their riders. Oh, so it's both, it goes both ways. I Absolutely. love it. Yeah. I love that. So it's not just, you do have some men drivers and you'll obviously have some men passengers. Yes. Uh, but the the focus, it's, it's centered on the safety, the added safety, uh, especially that women have to really pay attention to when it comes to ride share of any kind. Uh, so that is so cool. That I didn't cool? know that part. Isn't that cool? So cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's just women that don't feel comfortable driving in the evenings or late at night. Uh, women that would never have considered driving for a rideshare company. Uh, but you know, with the, with the economy where it is, this literally offers them an opportunity to build a platform, build a relationship, become entrepreneurs, um, and ride at their leisure, knowing that they get to feel secure when they're choosing the gender. I love, I love that because there's many times where like my daughters, my wife and I always Uber or Lyft together. Oops. Am I allowed to say that? We always ride share together. <laughs> Told you Mondays are tough with the coffee thing. Um, but, um, but my daughters, I would always worry. And I'm like, you need to be in a group. And I don't even know if I feel comfortable with two of you more, or you need to be with a trusted friend. Like it's, it, it's very scary. So, and it's unfortunate that it still has to be scary. Uh, but that is so awesome that you are catering or you guys have created a niche that's a needed niche that people really do need it. And they, you know, we're all about choices these days. And I love the fact that they'll have a choice. Um, I expect your competition to start kicking that up a notch. That's, yeah. I love this concept. I we, we have a full choice of, of the LGBTQ community. So you can choose, you know, that within the driver aspect. Uh, and, wow. and the, the beauty of this is what you mentioned, the most important thing for parents and the trust factor. Yeah. Once you, once you've taken a ride with a driver several times and you build that relationship with them, now they become a trusted driver in your network. And you can ask them, like, pick up the kids from school and drop, you know, drop them to the game, uh, to the tackle football game, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you let them know, Sal. That's right. <laughs> it's it's uh, you know, it's like after school practices, or you know, whether it's a piano practice or whoever can't get out of you know single you know single family homes with one car, but you only have you you think of what you would do to keep your daughter safe. Yes. Anything, you know. Um, and that, that's where we're at. We want to build this trusted relationship between the two women, uh, who can then be like, okay, I'll do grocery shopping, you know, just take care of this for me or pick up the medicine. So I think I understand now why this relationship is so cool ah. and uh, makes so much sense, but Odessa, I'll let you talk about it. So why is this such a great partnership for you all? Yeah, it's, um, well, it's a no brainer in terms of our causes, right? Even when you look at our mission statements, uh, we're about empowering women and girls through football and helping the world to reimagine the way they see women in strength, right? And then Sal and Safer are the exact same way. They're about empowering women and their families through technology. And so for us, 
you know, as we develop women's tackle football, it's about building entrepreneurship and, and making sure that these women are empowered to go out and build a livelihood through the things that they love. But it is also about choice. And that's the part of uh, Safer that made it a no brainer for us uh, in the league office, because it's 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 like these marginalized women in, in a lot of cases are never thought of when it comes to product development. And, it, and the same reason we, we stood up the WNFC is when we start, when these brands start thinking about a football player to represent your drink company or to represent your apparel company, very rarely were the thoughts of, well, let me get a women's football player to model that water bottle or to go open that garage or to drive that car and represent the sport. And so that's where the WNFC is coming in and say, listen, the you have a whole nother market that you can open your brand up to that, that you can open it, that you can inspire people with that involves women on the field with helmets on. And so conceptually, it makes so much sense, but it makes a lot of sense also in terms of we want our fans and our players and their families to have an opportunity to become safer drivers, safer to become to have ownership, entrepreneurial opportunities. And just anytime we can get something like this where it's all about women and advancing women, we're on board. I love it. And, and Sal, how about you? Why WNFC? Um, well, you just met Odessa, so that's a big part of the reason. <laughs> uh, but I, th I, th I think uh, the we earlier this well, yeah, earlier this year we were invited to uh, the Super Bowl. It was an amazing experience uh, with the leadership of the NFL Alumni Association, and uh, you know Bart Oates uh, and Beasley, who's the president, were generous enough to introduce us to the alumni group. We signed a MOU with them earlier this year. And uh, that was very exciting to get the athletes involved in this um, uh, from a business standpoint, from a uh, nonprofit standpoint. Uh, and as exciting as, as it was, as I, as I mentioned in, a, in another interview the other day was, we're all still men. <laughs> so, so, so immediately, you know, uh, kudos to the NFL alumni uh, for for taking the step and making sure that they introduced us uh, to the women's association, and by introducing us, we immediately started think ab about what are all the different ways we can collaborate. We're not a sponsorship or a one-off type of a thing. Uh, we see this as hopefully something that will be long term. It'll be something that is great for the, 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 the members and the athletes, uh, but also uh, something that we will be able to offer their fan base. Uh, but the athletes, I think the conversations are becoming more and more interesting from being able to take the license for the brand, being able to be involved in the brand, being able to be able to invest in the brand. Any of those things are, are up for discussion on how they want to get involved because we don't want to treat them just as, as, celebrities and personalities. We want to treat them as women entrepreneurs. I love it. I love the whole social entrepreneurship perspective sure. of this. It's just, it's so great. You've got such a great combination. And I love all of the things that you're doing. I love that it is so wide range. I didn't think of LGBTQ. Um, so how awesome is that? Because I have many friends in the community and that is always an issue and always a concern. Um, especially late at night. And it's just so awesome to have someplace safer to go, right? Oh my God, I threw it in there. Okay, I'm getting, I'm back on my game. I'm working on it. Here it comes. Okay, Ted. Coming back. Okay, Ted. <laughs> um, all right, so if people want to learn more about Safer, want to learn more about WNFC, what's the best way for them to reach out? How can they become fans? How can they get involved? Um, I'll start with you, Sal, and then we'll finish up with Odessa. Sure. You know, with, with us, it's really simple. We have uh, the app. So it's uh, Drive Safer. Uh, if you want to drive with us, go uh, Ride Safer if you want to be a, uh, a rider. So you can download the app. And we are already in Central Florida. We're launching in Texas. And we'll be moving uh, uh, state by state in, in over the coming months. So that that's step one. During COVID, we're working closely with 
uh, nonprofits such as Mustard Seed and also with Harbor House, providing free rides to to women in need in distressed situations. Nice. Um, uh, so so uh, basically, just go on the App Store and download the app. And uh, as far as our partnership uh, goes, this you'll start to see it formalize, and the different things that we're doing uh, with the WNFC. Uh, you'll start to see that uh, in the coming months. Uh, but Odessa, you've got an exciting calendar uh, of events and, and and games. So why don't you talk about that? Yeah, so we're, we're pretty excited. So you can go to WNFCfootball.com. Again, WNFCfootball.com. Our website has everything that we have going on. But the best way to support us right now is to follow us on all of our socials. We're at WNFC Football on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, we just got on TikTok, we're everywhere. And so it, it's a really fun, you, you can't not be a fan once you start following us because you start to see the action, the athletes, all of those things. Our 2020 season, unfortunately, was canceled due to COVID. We were supposed to be playing our championship game a couple of weeks ago. So we are have turned our complete focus to the 2021 season. So you guys will see upcoming virtual tryouts, on-field tryouts. A lot of our athletes are starting to do athletes challenges. We have some of our 20, 2019 content out there. So it's a really fun time to get introduced to women's tackle football. We actually have a huge campaign coming out, a secret campaign coming out at the end of the month with uh, Adidas and Riddell and, and some national media partners. So please go follow us again at WNSC Football and watch the action. And women's tackle football is something that once you get introduced to, you never want to forget. <laughs> I love y'all's energy. I love that you can tell there's a real camaraderie and respect for each other. And I love that. But you're also passionate about what you're doing. Uh, individually and and as a collaboration. I absolutely love it. I want you to come back when we're going to do some, we'll promote some of the athletes. We'll talk more. So I think what you all are doing is so important. And it's one of the strongest social entrepreneurship links I've seen in quite a while. So that is so awesome. Uh, so Sal with Safer, I believe it's gosafer.com. It's scrolling across the bottom. And then Odessa with WNFC, which is wnfcfootball.com, which is scroll also scrolling thank you guys so much i'm so excited for all of you thank you so much ted this is awesome i appreciate it sal awesome. always good to see you <laughs> thanks ted thanks for having us all right y'all have a great day thank you so much Take care. Right. Bye, bye bye guys see ya.